Welcome back to Inside Games, the only gaming news show brave enough to not be owned by IGN. <laughs> well, for now, you know. Uh, hey, IGN, if you're listening, we're keeping an eye on that inbox. So if you feel like sliding in there, we'll be ready for it. Uh, 10 million or nothing. Uh, we... <laughs> We really could live that dream, couldn't we? Collecting huge payouts and laying off everyone that helped build our gaming news empire, couldn't we? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's as American as apple pie. <laughs> Brian, Brian's shaking in his boots over there. Uh, only slightly less American, though, than uh, turning a military conflict into a mass-produced, mass-entertainment product. Ah, God bless America. That's right. We got new Call of Duty, more consolidation in games media, and someone beat Mario 64 without jumping, because they're crazy. Uh, something for everybody on today's Inside Games Roundup. A lot, of, a lot of gaming culture out there. So let's get our boots on the ground and kick off the news of the little Call of Duty. Brian, are you nervous in the service? Absolutely, yes. I was uh, I was not drafted, uh, bad ankles, but, you know, we all do our part. I'm reading the gaming news. Uh, yeah, uh, tons of news, but let's start with Black Ops 6. It is officially a thing. The franchise's official account on X announced the next installment saying, a dark new chapter of the Black Ops franchise begins. And it was it was very mysterious. Uh, it, we got a brief animated shot of this three-headed wolf emblem superimposed on the White House. Oh, but no. that wasn't all. Yeah, yeah, they're taking over the White House. The wolves <laughs> have come. Uh, but we also got footage of those darn kids defacing national monuments. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, the account later tweeted a video showing a group of people vandalizing Mount Rushmore, blindfolding the presidents with the phrase, the truth lies it's realize 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 that's my favorite <laughs> favorite meme uh another video showed some newspaper headlines announcing the vandalism R uh, news newspapers <laughs> yeah from the sounds of it this might be in the 90s so maybe people still had to read uh stone tablets back then the devs also set up another special website the truth lies.com <laughs> Man, remember ARG websites? That We're really throwing it back. Uh, but anyway, the website shows a TV with various video clips of other defaced monuments, all some variation of the truth lies. Another said, and, and they're really getting deep with this one, truth is the first casualty of war. Oh, I've never heard that before. Wow. Original. Uh, as for the game setting, well, Charlie Intel posted another teaser image that showed the word gulf in orange letters when you zoom in. That would align with the rumors that it'll be set during the Gulf War. And let me say, as a former newspaper reporter, it brought a tear to my eye to see newspapers and people <laughs> paying attention to them. It was great. Uh, yeah, Activision says we'll get a full reveal at the Xbox Game Showcase on June 9th. So, pretty soon. I wonder how much screen time the full reveal is going to take. Oh, the jargon is going to be delightful. They over... Because COD usually gets its own reveal event, right? A COD XP. I guess they're doing it here now because they're part of the Microsoft family, so... Uh, it'll be interesting. I guess Black Ops is our new franchise. You know, they mined out Modern Warfare after the reboot <laughs> gave them some life. So Black Ops is the only property they've got left. Uh, they tried to get a couple of World War II franchises off the ground, but nobody was biting, so... I guess we got three years of Black Ops, and then who knows? Who knows? Is this is this like 1991 Gulf War? Is that what they're? I yeah, think I so, guess yeah. so. Like, yeah. I think it's Desert Storm. Yeah. Oh man! So it's, it'll be like Black Ops, and next up, a special press conference with Magic Johnson, who has AIDS now. <laughs> and then the O.J. Simpson verdict. And the Berlin Wall fell. A lot of, <laughs> lot of news in '91. And a lot of like midday TV ads. Uh, advertising to veterans that they may be owed financial compensation for all the strange oh, yeah. shit they inhaled over there. And let's talk about gaming media consolidation. IGN is now the new lord and master of games media. <laughs> They've acquired a lot of pretty big name gaming media sites in an acquisition that also is sadly, of course, going to include layoffs. I mean, what a surprise. Uh, this week, IGN Entertainment announced that it acquired the Gamer Network family of digital brands which includes GamesIndustry.biz, Eurogamer, Rock, Paper, Shotgun, VG, 24 7 and dice breaker the purchase price was actually not publicly released gamer network also holds shares in outside xbox digital foundry and hookshot that group operates Nintendo Life, Push Square, Pure Xbox, and Time Extension. Yeah, and IGN, they, they didn't do this themselves. Their parent company is Ziff Davis. Uh, they acquired the brands from Reed Pop, who actually, they bought the Gamer Network business in 2018. So it's all getting passed around. And as we've learned, what can go wrong? Well, Brian, 
As a result of some of this, some folks are going to lose their jobs. That's what can go wrong. Uh, Brendan, Brendan Sinclair, the managing editor of GamesIndustry.biz, which is, by the way, a fantastic website, uh, was among those who got laid off. And Sinclair, in, in specifically, was an amazing reporter. He would write very direct, no-nonsense, very clear call-outs of a bunch of, of exec bullshit. Uh, I was a huge fan of his writing. Uh, one of the one of the few very concise, pointed, and intentional writers in games media. So uh, he he actually had a career's worth of skill in his writing and reporting. So it really sucks that he's getting let go. Maybe he stepped on the wrong toes. I don't know. Um, unfortunately, uh, Games Industry also reported that some redundancies have been made across the UK-based organization. Sucks. Yeah, it blows. Uh, as for Eurogamer, its editor Tom Phillips wrote that the sale wasn't a surprise because Gamer Network had been publicly up for sale for a few months. He said that at this point, Eurogamer has not been affected by the layoffs and that he hopes the site, quote, remains as strong and as independently minded as ever today and long into the future. Hmm. I, I'm troubled by this, man. I, I didn't expect a career future in games media but it's worse than I thought it would be. The only way you have a future now is if you build your own thing and that's it. No company has any interest in like, I guess there's just no market value in having perspectives on games that are more profound than what a 20 something who's willing to work 18 hours a day uh, can, can provide. So that sucks, <laughs> that sucks a lot. Um, I don't know. Consolidation in general is just kind of the name of the game these days, and I don't think we're all better off for it. I feel like a lot of people have gone to just uh, trusting influencers, too, in terms of just like, okay, this guy reviewed something, I'm gonna trust his review, which is fine, there's nothing wrong with that, but there is a there is a place for guys like Brendan who, yes, do actual journalism and who are, you know, trying to cover the industry because that's good, because otherwise it just becomes a big hype machine, and that's, that is, I promise you that is not what you want. Yeah, let's hope uh, GamesIndustry.biz doesn't change too much. Let's hope IGN keeps their fingers out of it, because I really, I really that's one of my favorite websites. I go there almost every day. Yeah, same. And uh, IGN has been doing okay themselves in terms of news reporting. They brought on a lot of staffers. Uh, yeah. They've even hired from Eurogamer and, and some outlets like that. So a lot of good reporters are working for IGN now. Uh, so I, I don't want to make them seem like the villains in all this, but it just, it does seem like there's fewer jobs for fewer people. Uh, and that competition is kind of driving down the value of everything. All right, on to, on to some more positive news. Uh, X Defiant, which is Ubisoft's new shooter, sets a record. Uh, Ubisoft's free-to-play arena shooter, X Defiant, is off to a pretty pretty big start. Yeah, Insider Gaming reported that the game hit 1 million unique players within two and a half hours of launching this week. That actually makes it Ubisoft's fastest game ever to hit 1 million players, which is, Kind of surprising. Yeah, and and then it kept going. Just 48 hours after launch, it had more than 3 million unique players and about 300,000 concurrents across all platforms. So yeah, great start. So for some context, Insider Gaming noted that Apex Legends hit 1 million unique players in eight hours and then two and a half million within 24 hours back in 2019. Yeah, pre-pandemic numbers too. So that's really impressive. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously Apex has gone on to be a really popular game, really sustainable, which is rare in the games of service space. It's obviously something Ubisoft wants to replicate and get under their umbrella. Uh, the free to play game will make its money through a battle pass and cosmetics. Still, I'm I'm kind of surprised that people had the willingness, tolerance and like mind space to even try out a new like hero shooter like that. Um, which makes me think maybe Valve's game is going to take off. Who knows? Did y'all see the footage leaked of, of Valve's Hero Shooter and everybody's like, eh, maybe just make a new Team Fortress? <laughs> Never. <laughs> yeah. Also for X Defiant, they've been marketing it against Call of Duty and they've been saying like, there's no skill-based matchmaking, so you can go in there oh, and do whatever wow. you want. Also, when I played this like a year and a half ago, Hit Reg was horrible and uh, it is still bad. They're, they're working on it right now. I actually just read something again today because I was... They were, the developers are like, yeah, we're still having trouble. Like, meaning like, if you run around a corner while you're getting shot, the shots won't connect. Um, and they, yeah, and that was a, that was a problem they had years ago, and they're still working on that. So I'm gonna let X Defiant settle out before actually giving it a shot. Glitch-based matchmaking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, let's finish out on something fun, and that is Super Mario 64 beaten. It was a record or, or an accomplishment nobody thought would happen. Uh, somebody, be an enterprising or clinically insane streamer, beat the N64 Classic without jumping. 
<laughs> wow. That's kind of Mario's thing. That and plumbing. Yeah, believe it or not, gamers have been trying for decades to beat the very popular platformer without using the A button at all. Many considered it an impossible feat, but you can't tell a gamer something's impossible. The streamer Marbler finally accomplished the unthinkable during an 86 hour marathon session. Okay, so he did it on the Wii Virtual Console version of the game without remapping any buttons. Marbler pulled it off thanks to a number of glitches and of course, secrets like uh, green shells and air currents. <laughs> this, what he did was harder than winning the Gulf War. Like, no question. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he did it. Uh, yeah, there's some glitches. Apparently it could only be done on the Wii Virtual Console version of the game. I'm not exactly sure why, but he beat it. And then he marked the occasion by saying, it's done, guys. It's done. And then he, he collapsed. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yeah, <laughs> and then he exploded. It is done. What a what an accomplishment, huh? We've come so far. Uh, here's a, this isn't necessarily related, but I had a magical experience that I would like others to replicate. Your inside game's challenge is to show a, drunk, a room full of drunk people watch for rolling rocks or the half a button press video. Basically, it's a, it's a pretty long-winded video describing a single speedrunning technique in Mario 64, but your mind will be shattered about five minutes in and then it goes for another 40 minutes. So if you can, like, reactions will be strong, especially if people have played the game. So try it, try it. I, I really respect, the, the, this is a great thing about the internet that we are able to wring more life out of these classic games. I, I do think stuff like this is really awesome and what the internet should be for. I like that you use that hand motion, wring more life, because that's exactly yeah. what they're doing. They're just like killing it, destroying it. Uh -huh. A little bit, yeah. There, there's still people just discovering new secrets in Mike Tyson's punch out. It's, it's awesome. Uh, all right, let's do a five second review. First of all, this is a scary game and I don't play these anymore. I, I did try this, but it's scary because being a parent is scary enough. That's why I don't play these. I, I'm just like, oh, is it a cough or is it COVID? Ah, look, so I, I, I know that she's going through a lot and I wish her the best, but I can't join her on this journey. <laughs> My five second Hellblade 2 review is that this review shouldn't be longer than the game. Boom. Boom, got him. Take that, you weird psycho babe. We need more psycho babes, actually, now that I think about it. She is a psycho babe, it's true. It's awesome. Yeah, it's like Aloy from Horizon just had a, a nightmare. That's what this game is. <laughs> Let's move on to the upcoming games for this week. Up first, Ultimate Godspeed. Uh, this is a party racing game. Place items on the track and bring chaos to the race. The goal, create the shortest way for you or the most pain for your opponents. It comes to PC on May 27th. Multiverses is coming out again, again? Oh, yeah. It's a free to play platform fighter that brings the depth of iconic WB stars to life across the nearly endless possibilities of play. Choose from, and this is, this is a hell of a lineup. Bugs Bunny, Batman, Arya Stark, <laughs> Rick Sanchez, and many more. <laughs> Ugh, that's a nightmare blunt rotation right there. Actually, Bugs Bunny would be right. Anyway, multi in multiverses, every star brings their unique moves, worlds, and attitudes to fight. As the roster expands, so does the spectacle. Nice. With new personalities and play styles turning up the heat in every battle, multiverses is coming to PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, and PC on May 28th. Next up, Rius 2. Rius 2, like Zeus 2, Rius 2. Sh shape worlds with your godly titans. Make symbiotic ecosystems and inspire humanity with your creations. Their achievements unlock new possibilities. Make different planets for different human spirits and fill the universe with life. That's what Thanos wanted to do. <laughs> it comes to PC May 28th. <laughs> Up next, Nine Souls. Nine Souls is a lore-rich, hand-drawn 2D action platformer featuring Sekiro-inspired deflection-focused combat. Embark on a journey of Eastern fantasy, explore the land once home to an ancient alien race, oh, ancient aliens, and follow a vengeful hero's quest to slay the Nine Souls, formidable rulers of this forsaken realm. Comes to PC, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Switch, May 29th. More games. This one's Astor, Blade of the Monolith. Rip through hordes of enemies with fury and style in this fast-paced action RPG. Play as Astor, a young warrior determined to unveil the secrets behind his creator's unforeseen demise. Wield an arsenal of runic weapons to hunt down the evil haunting the planet 
Gil S and save it from impending doom. <laughs> this game sounds awesome. App Store comes to PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and Switch on May 30th. Next up, Scald against the Black Priory. And this has so many buzzwords in the description. See if you can count them all. Take a drink for each one. It's a retro style party-based RPG set in a grim dark fantasy world of tragic heroes, violent death, and of course, Lovecraftian <laughs> horror. Take a chance and roll the dice as you embark on a compelling story filled with, filled with deadly creatures, a branching story, and tactical turn-based combat. <laughs> Baby, it's got everything. And it's coming to the PC May 30th. And now finally, the game I've been waiting 10 years for, Tiny Terry's Turbo Trip. That's a joke, guys. I don't even know what this is. Terry wants to launch himself into space using his new car. Doing something this cool and reckless will surely make him talk the talk of the town. Run, drive, and glide through this small journey of big discoveries as Terry works toward achieving this goal. It comes to PC May 30th, and you could bet I'll be streaming it for 24 hours. Tiny Terry's Turbo Trip Turbathon! <laughs> I'm waiting all year. <laughs> Speaking of supporting independent creations, uh, we have a lot of patrons on Inside Games. We love, we love them because they support us and help us produce fine entertainment. And gaming news coverage like this, I'd like to shout out a couple right here. There's a couple of patrons that I think have done ops blacker than you can imagine. Vanta Black Ops, Redden003, and Zach the Hack. thank you very, very much. 